The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Proverbs 18.8. Hey there, teens. Trent here. So, back in the United States history, when slavery was still legal, there's a story about a man named Peter. Peter was a slave. He worked on a Louisiana plantation, and one day he fled the plantation and ran to a nearby Union camp. And once he got there, the Union soldiers insisted on taking pictures of him. The reason why they wanted to take these pictures was because Peter had these awful wounds in his back. He received these wounds from a whipping he got a couple months previous. And you see, these wounds were so grotesque that the Union Army wanted to take pictures of them and pass them out kind of like tracks. So that's what they did. And in doing so, they proved that slaves were not being treated like humans. They were being treated like animals. In this proverb, God is trying to draw a parallel between someone who inflicts pain, kind of like a torturer, with a gossiper. Read this verse again, Proverbs 18.8. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. So here we have the talebearer. He is the one who is inflicting the pain. He is the one who is doing it. And what he's using is his speech. His speech is the torture instrument that he's using. But the wounds that he is inflicting is his own words. Teens, let's use simple logic here. If you were to gossip about someone, you wouldn't be gossiping about someone to that someone. You would be gossiping about someone to someone else. So what this verse is saying is that it's not the gossiped that is getting the wound. It's the one who's hearing the gossip that is getting the wound. They're the ones who are getting hurt. Teens, you would be able to protect yourself a lot more if you just discounted all gossip as lies. You see, this person who's inflicting the wounds, they're called a tale bearer for a reason. It's because all that they have are tales, fairy tales, stories, made up, fake. It would be better for you to discount all gossip as false than accepting it all as truth. So don't accept the gossip. Push it away. It's all fables. And even if it's true, just discount it as a fable because you're not certain of it. You have no proof that what they're saying is true. So just push it away for your own sake. Not for, just for their sake, for your sake. So you see, teens, when you hear gossip, the person being gossiped about isn't being hurt in the process you're being hurt in the process and the way that works is that with every single word it's like your perception of them is being torn it's like in your mind you have a little picture of that individual and every single word of gossip you hear it's tearing the picture so in reality the person being gossiped about isn't being hurt because they're exactly the same but your mind is being changed by the words you're hearing. That's why it says that it goes down into the innermost parts of the belly. It's going down into your mind. It's going down into your thought life. And your thought life is being changed. The gossip isn't changing their thought life. It's not even changing their physique. It's not changing their physical appearance. It's changing your mental perception of them. You're the one who's getting hurt. So teens, for your own sake, avoid gossip. Not for the other person's sake, but for your own sake. Just avoid gossip. All it is, is a whip that is bound to leave a permanent scar in your thought life. So just avoid it. Well teens, that's all I have for you today. But I hope you'll take this message to heart and you won't listen to the gossip. But I hope to see you in church sometime soon, and Lord willing, that will be soon. So until then, y'all stay safe. Take care.